Okay, here we are at geekyanimator.com and today we're going to learn about shading. How to do shading in NM Studio Pro and well there are a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, I'll show you them in a couple of uh, moments. First of all, um, alright, let me first make uh, an oval shape, alright. So I'm going to go to the tools menu, select the create shape tool, select the oval and I'm going to make a uh, oval, okay. I'm going to click and drag and here you are, here's an oval. So you make an oval and you show it to your friend and say that hey look I made a ball. So he comes there and says that what the hell man that's not a ball that's a simple you know uh, a round circle a round oval you have made man that's not a ball. He said man well he's right this, this does not look like a ball. Well but if you do one thing you go to the select uh, shape tool in the fill menu click on it and if you go to the style menu the style panel and under the effect click on the plain one and a drop down menu shows up and select the shaded menu click on it and let's just do the default settings over here so click ok and now if you render it and show it to your friend hey look I made a ball they say yeah man now that looks like a ball now this is this is why the shading is important you know shading gives the viewer a perception of something uh, something close to reality I would say something you know you know it makes it it perceives it as a 3d object so before it was a simple plain oval shape colored with simple color and this plain color and it wasn't at all looks like a look was looking like a ball now but after providing it a shading a shading effect now a user the viewer will perceive it as if uh, it's a 3d object so shading helps you a lot in improving your um, animation quality and basically how the viewer is going to perceive it. So I'm going to close the render window and I have already shown you the first method how which you, uh, using which you can apply the shading. So I'm going to just show you once again if you, if you want to apply shading effect to any of the shape. So you simply have to select the shape using the select shape tool. Click on the shape after the shape is selected go under the style panel and under the in front of this effect uh, label you can see a drop down menu is here inside select the shaded option and once you select it uh, that automatically uh, that uh, dialog box will open up for the settings of the shading now if that doesn't open up simply click on this uh, these this button over here with three dots that will open up the shaded settings now if you click on it you can see over here this is on the left hand side you can see the preview and on the right hand side there are certain settings that you can do so you have a right light angle you can change the light angle make your shade uh, in any direction that you want and you can also change the offset you may increase it or decrease it that will change the amount of uh, shading and the blur is the the blur amount of the uh, of the shade if i increase it you can see the blur gets uh, increased and also uh, after changing the you know uh, the blur one suppose I made it uh, back to 16 and if I want to preview it simply click on the other text box or any other text box there it's simply if I, if I here in this case if I click on this offset text box you can see that effect is now applied to it so you can see the preview of what is actually happening as you as you're changing the settings so you can even change the shadow color right now it's black so if I click on this rectangle and you have a bunch of color options over here you can you may choose whatever you like you know I can choose something something dark brown something like that if I click OK I can see that it, the shading is now the same color that I chose if I click back again I can't see the actual color that's because we have the alpha level set to 50% uh, over here this is the alpha level just beside the color option you may change it as you like but just let be the way it was it was 127 so I'm gonna change it to 127 just like before and I'm gonna select the black color because black color suits quite well so I'm gonna click OK and here you are so I'm gonna simply click OK and you can see how it um, looks like on the frame okay so this was one method to apply shading and another method will be um, I'm first I'm going to remove the shading for this object I'm going to click on it and select the shape and under the effect drop down menu I'm going to select plane plane is basically uh, you aren't applying any shape effects I have already explained these the shape effects in another video tutorial for the shape effects if you want to know more about them you can see that video alright so I'm going to select plane 
no shape effects if you click outside you can see no shape effects are applied to it even if you press ctrl plus r to render it you can see that uh, none of the effects are applied to the shape all right so another method for you know for shading is select the layer on which you want to apply shading all right now if you want to apply shading to the, all the shapes that are present in your layer this method is the one that you're looking for so i'm going to double click the layer to open up the layer settings and i'm going to go to the shadows panel and as the name says you can see all the shading effects going to be over here so i'm going to use this shadow i'm going to go for the shading first so i'm going to click on it shading on and again you see those similar settings over here also you can change it to whatever you feel like you can change the angle you may change the offset you know you can change the blur that i have already told you what these are and you can even change the contraction you can play with these settings around to see what actually happens even you can change the shading color so i'm going to let it be default i'm going to choose default i'm going to click okay and you can't see the shading on the layer right now you have to render your animation if i press ctrl plus r to render the image you can now see that there are uh, there is a shading beneath the shape that you had all right so um just to show you one more thing, if I click on the create shape tool again and I, if I select rectangle, let me choose a different color, I'm going to choose green. If I make a rectangle right here, now I haven't applied anything, any shape effect to this shape, but I have already applied the shading to the layer on which this, uh, this rectangle is drawn. So if I press Ctrl plus R, I can see the shading also applied to the rectangle. Alright, so this is the use of the this method, I mean, oops. I by mistake press the button and made a point over here the small point so I'm gonna press ctrl plus z to undo it so here we are so um, this was the uh, shading if you want to do the shading in the layer alright now if you go one step further ahead then we can apply shading to all the multiple layers into a whole group in short we can say let me show you I'm gonna uh, click on the new layer button and I'm going to select another vector layer just name it as layer 2 only so we have two layers layer 1 and layer 2 layer uh, 2 I'm going to create another shape I'm going to make a star alright I'm going to select yellow color I'm going to make a star oops uh, yeah so I'm going to translate it using the translate point tool selecting the shape inside clicking on the shape and dragging it to the wherever I want okay so here we have these three shapes and we have two layers now what we can do if you want to apply the shading to all the layers all the, both the layers all right so uh, first of all i'm going to select the layer one double click on it and i'm going to remove the shading shading off and click ok if i press ctrl plus r i can see no shading is there inside my shapes so what i'm going to do i'm going to select the new layer option and i'm going to sele select the group and i'm going to name it as group press enter now drag this layer one inside the group one this group layer and similarly for the layer 2 and when you drag it you can see that the group layer turns transparent red and horizontal bar beneath it that's the point where you want to release your layer so I'm going to release it and I, I can see those layers are inside the group layer right so these are inside now if I want to apply suppose there are a number of layers beneath the group layer and you want to apply shading to all of them with the same setting the shortest method would be to apply the shading on this group layer so I can select this group, group layer, and go to the properties by simply double clicking it, or I can even click on this button with the three dots. This open the this will open the layer settings. All right. So from here I can go to the shadows panel, and I can again I got the same options. I can turn the shading on, and if I press OK, and now if I press Control plus R, I can see the shading has been applied to all the layers and the shapes inside those layers. Alright, so this is quite a, a shortcut method you can use to apply shading to all the to a bunch of layers instead of going to every shape or every layer. All right. Well, this was about the shading. Let me just uh, um, show you one more thing about the drop shadow. So um, I'm gonna go inside the group layer again. I'm gonna turn off the shading. All right. So let me first show you what a group what a drop shadow is. So I'm gonna select layer one. And I'm going to select the select shape tool. I'm going to select this oval again. And to the effect panel, to the effect uh, drop down menu inside the style panel, I'm going to select drop shadow. 
and you can see that you in the preview what a drop shadow is a drop shadow is simply a shadow for the shape that you had selected so i'm going to increase the offset so that you can actually see it so i'm going to press ctrl plus r and you can see a drop shadow beneath the shape cool i can similarly do the same for the rectangle or for the star and if i want i can do the same for the layer so first of all i'm going to select the shape i'm going to remove it so i'm going to press plane now no effect is there. If I press, press Ctrl plus R, you can see no drop shadow has been applied. So if I click on the double click on the layer and go to the shadows panel, here is the menu for the drop down shadow. So if you click on it and with the default settings, if I press OK and press Ctrl plus R, you can see drop shadow has been applied for the layer one. We had these two shades in the layer one, so we have the drop shadow for both of them. Quite fine. Well as you must have guessed we can apply the drop shadow for the whole group also so if I double click the layer one again to turn off the um, layer shading because if you keep it turned on alright and you apply the shading on the group also so you so then at that time you will have you know two shadings I mean one for the group layer one also and the other for the whole group so that would seem you know quite um, uninterested I mean quite awkward two shadings I mean suppose you made shading for the layer one going to the left hand side and another in the group layer for the right hand side so you see two shadows going one at the left and one at the right well this will seriously seem awkward so uh, all I can do I can go to the group settings double click on it and under the shadows panel I can turn on this shadow on you can play with the settings I'm not doing anything much uh, you know changing the effects because this thing you can actually do it by yourself as you're liking um, as you need the effect so uh, just let it be I'm going to click OK and now if I press Ctrl plus R you can see that all the layers lying beneath it will have a drop shadow all the shapes will have a drop shadow so if I press Ctrl plus R the drop shadow is shown for all the both the both the layers and the shapes inside them alright so this gives you I mean you can see that um, this giving you an intention a uh, perception that this shape is coming out from the uh, from the from the background, this background wall. There's a wall beneath, beside, uh, behind it, and this oval shape is coming just ahead of the wall. And there must be a loud light source over here, which is dropping a shadow on the wall. So I mean, this gives you an intention of something, you know. Again, something like three D. You are some seeing something as three D, even though you're not. So. Shadings and these drop shadows are really very important to bring that effect inside your animation. So um, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you learned something. And I hope you're going to try it by yourself in an M Studio Pro. Because that's the best way to learn, you know, do it yourself. So that's all. Any doubts you may comment in the uh, below the video so that I can let uh, you can let me know what you have doubts. So that's all for this. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Uh,